Okay, welcome back. This is the seventh lesson in unit four. We are looking at um, or problems. Um, so this might be um, somewhat difficult. We'll see, okay? It's just four problems, but, but you have all the skills to solve all these problems, okay? All right, let's look at some examples here. It says two numbers have a difference of 18. Does their product have a maximum or a minimum value? Determine this value and these two numbers, okay? So, um, well, the question is asking for two numbers have a difference of 18. So we have two numbers. Let's say we have X and Y, okay? We have two different numbers. Uh, they have a difference of 18. So from this, what I do, what, what I can get from that is then, um, well, in that case, X minus Y is equal to 18. So I'm saying X is the bigger number. And so if you take away the smaller number, you still have 18 left, right? So ha they have a difference of 18. Now the question is, does their product, okay, product recall means multiplying together, right? The result that you get from multiplying is called a product. So the product is equal to X times Y. Now we're looking for it, whether this product is a maximum or a minimum. Well. If you look at this equation right here, you have three variables, P, X, and Y. Now, we don't know how to deal with equations with three variables. We can only deal with two variables. However, what we, can, what we have here, this will lead us to, um, we can actually isolate for one of the variables, right? And then we can substitute, right? So this tells us that X is equal to Y plus 18. Okay, I simply move y to the right, so then I get x equals to y plus 18. Now I can use this fact and put this in here, right? So then I have p is equal to, now this says x, but we just said that x is equal to y plus 18, so I'm going to substitute that for x, y plus 18, times y. Okay, so then my product equation, then if I expand this, I get y squared plus 18y. Okay, so now I, I can express the product in terms of one number only, which is okay. The question is, do we have a maximum or minimum value here? Well, this is a quadratic function, right? You can see it's, a, it's y squared, right? The biggest exponent here is 2, so this is a quadratic function. Because the leading coefficient is positive, we know the graph opens upwards. So it looks something like this. And therefore we have a minimum, okay? We are gonna have a minimum somewhere there, okay? We are going to have a minimum. Now the question is, well, what is this minimum and what are these two numbers? Well, that means we're looking for this vertex, right? We're looking for the vertex. So then I guess what I need to do, you know how to find the vertex, hopefully by now, you need to complete the square. So you divide this middle number by two, which is nine, Square that you got plus 81 minus 81. Recall these first three terms is a perfect square. This is simply y plus 9 squared. Um, we need to move this 81. Well, I guess there's no brackets. I mean, we could put brackets around here, but I mean, or here. Uh, but leading coefficient is just one, so then it's like we don't have brackets here. Okay, so then just minus 81 here. That's it. Okay, so here is the product. Um, the vertex occurs at negative 9, comma, negative 81. Okay, that means the minimum, the minimum value is negative 81. Okay, and we know it occurs when y equals negative 9. So one number is negative 9. y equals negative 9. Well, what about x? Well, we have an equation here that we can use to solve for x, right? So we say x is equal to y, which is negative 9, plus 18, which is positive 9. So there you go. So the minimum value will be negative 81, and these two numbers will be negative 9 and positive 9. Okay, so that's your full solution. Okay, so when you solve word problems, again, you just need to read the question carefully and extract uh, information from the question and put it into um, equations or expressions 
that you can use to help you to solve. Okay, so here is the practice question. It's some somewhat similar, but a little bit different because this portion is a little bit different. See if you can figure out. Okay, hopefully that's what you have to begin at least. Okay, we will see what's happening afterwards, but you should have this to begin with. Um, two numbers have a difference of 16, so x minus y is 16, which means x is equal to y plus 16. Now, the second portion of this uh, problem says the sum of their squares is a minimum. Okay, so the sum, sum recall is the addition, right? So sum is equal to uh, sum of their squares. So x squared plus y squared. Okay, so sum of their squares. We, it tells us that this is a minimum. Okay, so that's good. I mean, it's given to us already. That's perfect. Now, again, we have three variables. We can solve this. But again, I did this already. I said that x is equal to y plus 16. So I can change this into y plus 16 squared plus y squared. Okay, so now I'm going to expand. I have the sum, which is equal to y squared plus 32y plus 16 squared, I believe is 256, plus y squared. Okay, combine like terms, you get 2y squared plus 32y plus 256. And now we can complete this square. And again, you can, you can take a look. You see the leading coefficient is positive too. So you can tell that it is a minimum, and which it does tell us it's a minimum, so it makes sense, okay? Anyways, we can now uh, complete the square. We can factor out the two for the first two terms. Um, take this middle term, divide that by two. So 16 divided by two is eight. Square that is 64, minus 64 here. We still have the plus 256 outside. The first three terms, again, is a perfect square. It is simply y plus eight squared. Now we need to move this negative 64 outside, so multiply by the leading coefficient, so times 2, you get negative 128, plus 256. Finally, you should get, sorry, not y, s sum is equal to 2 times y plus 8 squared. Negative 128 plus 256 is positive 128. Okay, so what this is what this is telling me is that I, we will have a minimum of 128. And this occurs when y is equal to negative 8. Again, this is your vertex, right? The vertex is negative 8, 128. So the minimum is 128, and this happens when y is negative 8. Now, we need to find the other number. Again, we have this equation solved already, so we just need to plug that in. x is equal to negative 8, the y value, plus 16, which is positive 8. So you have your answer, y is negative 8, and x is positive 8. Okay, uh, hopefully that was okay for you, and hopefully that's all you got as well. Okay, so now we are going to move on to a different one here. Example 2, it says a rectangular play area is to be bounded by 120 meters of fencing. Determine the maximum area and the dimensions of this rectangle. Okay, so now I'm going to draw this rectangle right here. We have a rectangle. It says um, this play area is to be bounded by 120 meters of fencing. So what this is telling me is that the perimeter is actually equal to 120 meters. Right? That's the perimeter. Fencing really is just the surrounding, right? The uh, well, the fence surrounding this play area. Okay. So now we are looking for the maximum area. Okay, so then we are thinking about area. Recall, this is a rectangle, so then the formula for area is length times width. And here's length, and here's width of the rectangle. Now, if that's length, obviously that's length as well, and that will be width as well, right? It's a rectangle, so they should be the same. Now, we, so that's all we have, okay? Now, we again, we have three variables. We can solve this because there's three variables. We need to somehow... Um, write L in terms of W or the other way around, write W in terms, of, in terms of L. Now what we can do is we can use this information, right? Perimeter is 120. We know that perimeter um, is equal to, for this rectangle, we have 2 
times the length times plus the width, okay, or width plus length. Okay, if you add these, the length plus the width, right? If you add these two and double it, you get the full perimeter. So this is the equation that we can work with. Uh, I'm just gonna, okay, I'll erase this first. I'll use that later. So we can solve for this. I can divide both sides by two, and then I guess 60 is equal to W plus L. And we can write one in terms of the other. I'm gonna move W over to the left. I end up with negative W plus 60 equals length. Okay, so this is the equation that I can use for the area. So again, area is equal to length times width. We have two variables. We can now replace L with the uh, equation that we just came up with, right? Length is the same as negative W plus 60 times W. Now we can expand this. This is negative W squared plus 60W. This again is a quadratic function. This time the leading coefficient is negative, which means the graph opens downwards, right? It opens downwards like this. And therefore we will have a maximum, which makes sense because that's what it says right here. Okay, so I think we are fine. And now again, if we want to find a maximum because it occurs at the vertex, so to find a maximum, we just need to complete the square. So area is equal to negative, I'm going to factor our negative sign, w squared minus 60w. Again, to complete the square, I need to take half of that and squared. So 60 divided by 2 is 30, squared is plus 900 and minus 900. First three terms will be a perfect square. This is w minus 30 squared. We need to move this negative 900 out, multiplying by the negative one in the front, I get plus 900. So our vertex is, sorry, not W, our vertex is at 30 comma 900. What this is, what this tells me is that the maximum area is 900. And this occurs when the width is 30 meters, okay? Uh, this is A because that's the Y value, as you can see. This is W because that's our W variable right there. Okay, so we can write the uh, answer here. Maximum area would be 900 square meters. Width is 30 meters. We can find the length again by using this formula. Or really you can just, because it's a rectangle. So if we know the area and the width, to find length, that's just area divided by width, right? Or you can just use this formula again. Okay, it doesn't matter. Many different ways to solve this. Um, w is 30, so negative 30 plus 60, which is positive 30. So the length is also 30 meters. Makes sense. I mean, the biggest rectangle that you can that it can be is a square, right? So okay, so this is the answer. Okay, if you need to think about it, that's fine. Pause the video and go back, watch it again. Okay, just think about it. We're gonna continue. Um, I'll draw a diagram for you and then I'll let you try it, okay? So it says, a ranger has 800 meters of fencing to enclose a rectangular cattle pen along a riverbank. So we have the river and we have a pen, okay, like that. Um, there's no fencing needed along the riverbank because it's this river, that's like a fence. Determine the dimensions that would enclose the largest area. So again, we're looking for the area. So this time, just like the previous question, the perimeter is 800, and we know we're looking for the area, so again, it's length times w, okay? So we would have length here, and w here, and there. So the perimeter would simply be equal to length plus 2w. Okay, um, you need to isolate for one of the variable because we have two unknowns here. So you either isolate for L or W. I think it's quite clear that we should isolate for L because we just need to simply move 2W to the left, then we're done. So in that case, we get negative 2W plus 800. Now, once you have this equation, we can plug that in here. So area would then equal to negative 2w plus 800 times w, okay? 
So area is equal to negative 2w squared plus 800w. Okay, I'll let you finish the rest and I'll show you the answer in a bit. Okay, so if you, once you have this, you just need to follow the procedure to um, complete the square, then you can find a vertex. Again, you find the vertex because we're looking for the largest area, which is the maximum, right? Maximum occurs at the vertex. So we complete the square to find the vertex. This is what you should get. Again, 80,000 is the area. Okay, so the maximum area will be 80,000 square meters. Um, and this happens when the width is 200 meters. Once you find 200 meters for your width, you can plug into this L function, the length function, to get your length. Okay? All right, so the last type of question is about revenue, okay? Revenue and um, price and quantity. Okay, so let's read the question here. It says, every week a takeout restaurant sells about um, 2,000 chicken wraps for $1.50 each. Through market research, the restaurant manager determines that for every 10 cent increase in price, she will sell 100 fewer wraps. What is the price of a wrap that will maximize the revenue and what is the maximum revenue? Okay. So before you do this question, you need to understand this. Revenue, okay, revenue is equal to price times quantity. Okay, so the price, how much you're selling at, times how many you, you know, you, you, that was sold. So multiply the price and the quantity, that will give you the revenue. Okay, revenue is the money you generate from selling. Okay, not the profit. Okay, revenue and profit is not the same. Revenue is just simply uh, the money you get from consumers. Okay, so now uh, let's see here. Let's, let's see what information we have. It says originally, without any change, you can actually sell 2,000 chicken wraps for $1.50. However, if you increase the price, you will sell less, which makes sense. Okay. Now, what we want to do is, as a as a uh, owner, obviously, you want to maximize maximize your revenue, and you are thinking maybe if I increase the price, I know I will sell less, but maybe that will actually generate higher revenue. Okay. So. So this question is actually very applicable, okay? So let's see. It says, if we increase 10 cents in price, so this, this is what I'm gonna do right now, okay? So I'm gonna say, let x be the number of times we increase the price. We increase the price. So what that means is if X is one, we increase 10 cents. If X is two, we increase 20 cents. If X is 10, we increase a dollar. Okay, so X is not the amount that we're increasing by, it's the number of times we increase the price by. Okay, so again, if X is two, we increase 20 cents. If X is three, we increase 30 cents and so on. Okay, so now I can actually use this to come up with my revenue equation. R is equal to price. Okay, now the original price was $1.50. So this was my original price. Now, I can increase the price by adding 0 0.1 times x, right? Again, 0 0.1 is how much I'm increasing by each time. That's the actual amount, $0.1. X is the number of times I increase the, uh, the price by. So if X is two, you can see 0 0.1 times two is 0 0.2. So it, that means I'm increasing 20 cents. And that makes sense because it's 1.5 plus 0 0.2. So it's $1.70. Okay, so this is the price. This is the price function times quantity. Well, originally I have 2000 chicken wraps that were sold. If I increase the price, I will sell less so i need to subtract and i know each time i increase i will sell 100 less so it's going to be minus 100x right again that means if x is one so if x is one that means i increase the price by 10 cents that means i'll drop 100 chicken wraps therefore 1900 right so this makes sense 2000 minus 100 times one is 1900 so this is my quantity um, function so there you go, revenue is price times quantity. So now we can actually solve this question because this is going to be a quadratic function if I expand it.
So now um, I have 1.5 times 2,000. This is 3,000. 1.5 times that's negative 150. This is 200. So plus 50x. Uh, negative 1 times 100 is 10. So minus 10x squared. Okay, so now I can move this over. I'm going to rearrange it first. Negative 10x squared plus 50x plus 3,000. Now I need to complete the square because again, we're looking to maximize the revenue, which means we're looking for the vertex. So factor negative 10, x squared minus 5x, divide this by two and then square, uh, that'll be plus 6.25 minus 6.25 plus 3,000. Is that right? Let me just quickly take a look. That looks fine. Okay, so now I need to um, complete. This is going to be a perfect square. So if I factor that, I should get x minus 2.5 squared. Negative 10 times negative 6.25 is plus 62.5 plus 3,000. So my final answer, or com I shouldn't say final answer, my factor, my vertex form is going to be this. Okay which means I would have a vertex at 2.5 comma 3062.5. Okay. So this is X. This is the revenue. Okay. So what's the answer for what's the maximum revenue? The maximum revenue, maximum revenue is three thousand sixty two dollars and fifty cents now there's also a second part of the question it says what is the price now because we found x again x is not the price we can plug in this 2.5 into the price function right if it asks you for how many chicken wraps will be sold then you plug into the quantity function but this time it's asking for the price so you plug it into the price function so price is equal to 1.5 plus 0 0.1 times 2.5, which is $1.75, okay? So if you sell each chicken wrap at $1.75, that will generate the maximum revenue of $3,062.50, $3 okay? So this one is uh, a little bit longer than the previous one because first of all, you need to understand uh, the relationship between revenue, price, and quantity. Revenue is price times quantity, and um, I would let x be the number of times we increase the price, and from there we can actually come up with a quadratic equation, and then we can um, find the vertex of the quadratic function, and then uh, get your final answer. Okay, last practice question for you to do. Um, I will let you try it, but um, I'm just going to help you with the first step. It says a 400 room hotel is three quarters full when the room rate is an, is an average of $80 per night. So originally, if we sell the rooms at $80 per night, the quantity is not 400, right? It's three quarters full. So you need to multiply by three quarters, which is 300 rooms. Okay. So um, $80 per night would be 300 rooms sold. Okay, so go ahead and try rest of this question. All right, so here is the work that I've done. Um, again, 300 rooms, I'm saying that X is the number of times we increase $5 by. So the revenue would be again, price times quantity. New price would be $80 plus five times X. And the quantity will be 300 minus 10 X. Um, if you multiply the, them out, you should get uh, this, okay? And then again, complete the square to find the maximum. In this case, um, X is actually, oh, I made a mistake. Uh, that should be minus, minus 14, that's right, minus 14. So that's minus seven and minus seven. Here we go, minus seven and minus seven. Okay, so X is actually, sorry, the vertex is at seven comma 26, 
1450 so that means the maximum revenue is going to be um, so maximum revenue it says maximum income same thing maximum revenue is twenty six thousand four hundred fifty dollars and when the price when the night the price is well I guess we need to um, actually calculate that because we know that x is 7 so what we need to do is put into the price function price is equal to 80 plus 5 times 7 so this is 115 is 115 dollars per night or when the 90 price is 115 dollars okay so that'll be your final answer okay so be careful um, this is negative 50 so when you factor don't make the same mistake as I did there um, make sure you change it to negative sign okay um, yeah that's that's it for this uh, word problem section do some practice let me know if you need some help